Okay, Greg Vandy KXP No Depression Festival, first ever, beautiful sunshine in Seattle. Patterson Hood is with us. Thanks for coming. Hello, thrilled to be You're here. Playing in a bit. Yeah, thrilled, thrilled to be here. Yeah. What a beautiful day. Yeah, nice to the, have you. The myth, the myth about it always raining in Seattle yeah. continues. This is about my fifteenth time in town, and I've yet to see it from you. So. Really. Nice. Now, they just tell us that to keep us Southerners from moving <laughs> up here and ruining everything with our conservative politics and bad ways. What about sweet tea, though? I'm sorry, what? You can bring the sweet tea. Oh, we could definitely bring the sweet tea. So Murdering Oscar is the uh, is your new record. It's your solo record. And that's been uh, some time in the making. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I wrote a lot of it in 94 when I first moved to Athens, Georgia, about a year before year and a half before I started working on putting together the drive-by truckers so uh, it was a, a pretty prolific time for me because I, I was working a crap job that didn't really matter to me and so I'd work for a while they'd come home and write and play all day and then go out drinking in the clubs in Athens and seeing bands and uh, I wrote about 200 songs that year and uh, the I guess my favorite 10 or so of them I put on this cassette tape and called it Murdering Oscar and Other Love Songs. And um, and then the next year I got busy working on what became the Drive-By Truckers and writing what became Southern Rock Opera and all that stuff and kind of moved on and left those songs behind and, and to some extent even forgot about them. And I stumbled on the tape in 04 and uh, really liked it. I liked the songs and it was it was almost like they were written by some other person because my life had changed so much. But I liked the songs and I wrote some new songs that kind of answered the differences the 10 years had made and recorded it all as kind of a side project during a break the band was having right before my daughter was born. And um, my friends in Centromatic played on it, Will Johnson and Scott Dambaum, and uh, my dad played on it, and uh, David Barbie, who produces the Trucker Records, played on it. And right. The guys in the Truckers, Shauna, all, all those folks played on it. Yeah. And, uh, so we just kind of had a, a, just cut it real quick in about two weeks in the January of 05, and then it didn't come out for another four and a half years. So uh, now it's finally out, and I've got kind of the core band from it out on the road with me to do a few dates. We kind of built our West Coast tour around coming here and doing this. Mm -hmm. nice. so. so it's like a fine wine. It comes yeah. out when it's ready to come out. Yeah, evidently, yeah. Now the best part about it is your dad, because I'm not sure if everyone is aware of what a legend your dad really is, David Hood. Muscle Shoals. Yeah, my dad's played on a lot of great records. He was um, part of the original Muscle Shoals sound rhythm section, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, he played on Aretha Franklin and Wilson Pickett, Percy Sledge. I'll and, take you there. Uh, I'll take you there by the, uh, the Staple Singers, and uh, uh, played on Phases and Stages by Willie Nelson and uh, a bunch of Paul Simon and Rod Stewart records, yeah. Bob Seger records. And it's the first time you guys actually recorded together. Yeah, and uh, I mean, pretty much first time we even played together on any kind of a level. Because we, uh, you know, he, he was old school in that he was from the generation where you don't take your work home with you. And so when he had come home from working in the studio, he wouldn't play guitar or bass or, you know, or want to talk about it for that matter. So, uh, so I grew up kind of obsessed with this other life my dad was having that he wouldn't share with me and uh and ended up leading me to doing what i do mm -hmm. but uh but it was yeah i was 40 before we played together so wow. is he supportive of your music now <clears throat> totally totally yeah, yeah. He, he's actually uh the truckers are playing a show with his band the decoys okay. uh, in about two weeks up in my hometown mm -hmm. which is the first time we've played my hometown you know for all practical purposes ever i mean we've done a couple of like practically little private things there but but uh there's n never really been a venue to play there and uh but we're putting on a show in this old movie theater where i used to go to movies as a kid and uh and uh so my dad's band's gonna play on the bill with us Great. that'll be fun what's in store for drive-by truckers <clears throat> we're uh when i go home tomorrow the next day we go in the studio to start mixing our next record and uh we cut 25 songs this spring, and uh, so we're kind of trying to whittle it down and figure out what the album is and all of that. Yeah. But uh, you guys work a lot. Yeah, we've we've got a uh, we will have put out like five or six things in a year's time by the mm -hmm. time a new record comes out because we did a record with Booker T. Yeah, uh, that came out in April. Potato hole. And uh, potato hole. Yeah. There's a live at Austin City Limits uh, DVD that came out this week and. Uh, 
like a collection of outtakes and rarities from yeah. the New West years. It's coming out in September. And then our new record will be out the beginning of next year, probably. And you backed that Betty Levette, too. And we did the Betty yeah. Levette record. So you're in the studio a lot. Yeah, yeah, I, which I love. I love recording. You know, I, I, I wish I had time to do more of that, but we're on the road so much that it's kind of, you know, we kind of have to plan ahead to find a little bit of time that we can go in and, and do these projects. Yeah. What's the biggest difference between southern crowds and northern crowds when you play on the road? Uh, I don't know. In a lot of cases, the venues are better. I mean, like out here, you know, out west, the, some of the really nicest places to play in America are out here on the west coast. So, uh, you know, Seattle's a particularly just a great town to play in always. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but I mean, it's it's like, it's, it's more based on the, the, the cities as opposed to the geography of what part of the country it's in. Yeah. I mean, you know, for years and years, the South was kind of the last place that we caught on. It was kind of kind of weird. I mean, we we had, you know, we're pulling much bigger crowds out here or in New York or Baltimore or Chicago than we were any southern city except for Richmond and uh, Richmond, Virginia, for some reason, embraced us really early and Atlanta and, of course, Austin. Yeah. But, uh, but those were like our only three towns we did any sized crowds in until, you know, some years after Southern Rock Off. Yeah, yeah. We're here for No Depression, the festival, the first ever one here you're playing. And did you thumb through the pages of No Depression back in the day? The yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, they were, you know, you about the them? only people covering this whole big swath of what was going on in music in the, in the you know, early 90s when people like me and a lot of other people around the country got really disenfranchised with, you know, the with what the mainstream of music was being and kind of, you know, turned to some more roots music and stuff and and uh, you know, they were ahead of the game and covering yeah. it. Plus just the long features, you know, yeah. the the double length features was such yeah. a great Did you agree with all the reviews? Not necessarily. <laughs> no. But, mostly uh, good I think. Oh of, of my band, oh, yeah. Of my band truckers. generally has fared pretty well, you know. I, I, I think so. I think overall we fared pretty well. I think they're easy on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patterson Hood, Drive By Truckers, Greg Vandy, KXP, No Depression Festival. It's great here in Seattle. All right, Thanks, thank you. Man. Yeah.